What's happening? Just being able to work with so many talented people and, and learn from them was, was great. It was so funny that in the scene, sometimes you might see me go... <laughs> Taika wrote such a touching, thoughtful, like, weird, <laughs> kind of uh, trippy, strange, um, magical film. Scarlett Johansson there on the red carpet laying out some of the reasons that she thinks Jojo Rabbit is getting such a buzz uh, in Toronto. Tiff, day five today, uh, that was one of the highlights of the weekend. It was already on Eli's radar as one of the movies you were most oh, looking yeah. forward to. And here is Eli with us this morning. So having experienced the carpet and the film, comedy about <laughs> Hitler and Nazism. So here's the thing. Yeah. I, I haven't seen it yet, and I'm, I'm literally scheming. I'm like, maybe if I'm not on next hour, I can go. So, no, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to do my <laughs> job. But when we went on the carpet, that's yeah. basically the, the conversation we want to have is like the Second World War. I mean, there are pe the survivors of the Holocaust are dying. And so there is this fear from some that you take on a subject that is so serious and so important, and you make it into a joke. You're lampooning. Yeah. Adolf Hitler, is that the right thing to do? Is that safe? Does the movie work? Well, I mean, I think what we heard from people again and again on the carpet is that this, if ever there was a time to laugh at Nazis, the time is now. And in fact, the reasons are increasing. Take a listen to what Stephen Merchant, who is in the film, had to say. Unfortunately, we've never had to stop laughing at Nazis, even since the 40s. You know, I think the very fact that this film is still relevant is, is a great sort of uh, condemnation of, of humanity, that we still have to mock Nazis and fascism and, and this, kind of, this kind of prejudice. And, you know, I was talking with Taika Waititi, the director himself. You know him from Thor Ragnarok and so many other films. And he was saying, I mean, that's what you can do with comedy, is that you can present a subject in a way that even people who don't know are going to learn something and make points that maybe wouldn't work as well in a straight-on film. But we also got a chance to catch up with Scarlett Johansson, who plays a mother in this film, and she's actually hiding Jews from the Nazis in this movie. Now, she was, like so many, so excited to work with Waititi, who is, I mean, he's intelligent and a Reverend, and he's this voice that Hollywood just wants to, uh, I think, work with right now. But the interesting thing about Johansson was she just got to hear from Toronto, and she hasn't really seen this movie with a public audience yet, like, you know, regular people, not industry honchos. And so we were talking with her, and I, and I let her know that there are people outside this theater, I saw them, who had been waiting since 8 a.m. that morning for rush tickets to try and go in to see that film. And, well, take a listen to uh, her reaction. It's awesome. I mean, it's been such a, you know, I guess you go in and you make something, and then you kind of hope that people kind of get what you're doing and then and then when 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 they get excited to see it it's like that's the magic right you want to share that and I guess we'll see more of her because she has another movie uh, the marriage story uh, also in uh, at TIFF and uh, the early buzz on uh, Jojo Rabbit very strong very strong excellent uh, some of the other films on your radar for this day five um, I have watched uh, a beautiful day in the neighborhood oh, over the weekend Tom Hanks. I lined up <laughs> I got in Hanks as Mr. Rogers and you know what really struck me watching this live. film is not only like this is a movie that's like re-educating all of us. This is a movie where sometimes the film actually functions great like that as an episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And he's talking to the audience and there was this feeling where I'm in the theater with all these Trontonians and Mr. Rogers saying, have you ever felt like that? Have you had trouble letting go of those emotions? And you feel people, you feel the adults nodding, like we have this relationship. We're responding to Hank's version of Mr. Rogers. But we did get a chance to catch up with Tom Hanks, barely, it was a crazy carpet, on the red carpet. And he talked about really what made that children's TV host special and talking about his integrity. Let's take a look. What I learned, I think, was that you can, you can somehow choose um, you can choose an authentic life even when you're working in the midst of an extremely fake and, uh, uh, and bendable be, uh, job. Uh, and he was. You know, you have to look at his output on television, and it was singularly honest. 
And I think you'd easily dismiss it because it wasn't an honesty that mattered to you and me. It was an honesty that mattered to extremely young people who did not know how the world worked. Yeah, that uh, film is a tonic for our time. Moving on from uh, a performance not so comedic, but we know him, of course, from previous films, to Eddie Murphy, the return of Eddie Murphy. I was on the red carpet for Dolomite Is My Name. He is playing uh, this legendary black exploitation character, Rudy Ray Moore, came up with the idea of this ridiculous character, this kind of kung fu um, shopping pimp. And now that's Eddie Murphy's, uh, you know, almost want to say comeback vehicle, because it's been so long since we've seen Eddie make us laugh and he was telling me it was this movie that's re-energized him. That's why he's doing stand-up comedy again. That's why he's going to be on Star Night Live. Like suddenly he's Murphy... He's got a resurgence. Wow. He's got a resurgence. So there's that. Um, Just Mercy uh, certainly is one of the contenders for the People's Choice Award, I think, at TIFF. Incredibly powerful film with Michael B. Jordan and Jamie Foxx based on the true life story of Brian Stevenson who has spent his career cr crusading for the wrongly accused. Many of them on death row. Incredibly powerful stuff. And then finally, let's pivot ahead till tonight. Tiff is not over. And I think one of the big questions is that guy playing Joker. So Joaquin Phoenix won major award at the Venice Film Festival, finally Toronto tonight, getting its look. And uh, I mean, I've heard talk about just what he's doing as an actor. There were some fears that, you know, in this time of shootings and violence, is this the right time to present such a dark, twisted uh, vision? So it's not a laughing matter. It's not the classic um, comedy character, something very different. And uh, we'll be uh, talking about that film very soon. Just won the best picture at, at the uh, yeah, Venice Film such... Festival. I mean, never before has the Venice Film Festival handed out that kind of award to a movie that's A, from a major studio, and B, actually based on a comic book. So uh, that maybe bodes well for Joker. I'm Perhaps. looking forward to our conversation later on and tomorrow. Eli, thank you very much. You're on welcome. this day five, Eli Glasner on the red carpet for us. Now, let's bring you, speaking of Tom Hanks, you know the story of the Grinder Coffee, small business in Toronto, which tries to attract a celeb. Remember that cardboard cutout from Ryan Gosling, which worked last year? Now, they set out trying to attract Tom Hanks, who's in town, as Eli was just saying, for a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Guess what? It worked again. He arrived over the weekend uh, for a drink and some pictures. And the owner wasn't there, so we actually talked to her on the phone. <laughs> I wonder who it'll be next year. Pretty gracious Hollywood stars in town for a film festival day five of TIFF. And this is CBC News Network.